Ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to the World Congress of Anesthesia. It is my pleasure to share with you a few thoughts on the physiology of venous return. So my goal today is to provide some physiological model uh, through mental images for venous return that uh, would allow a clinician the creation of a mental framework supposed to anticipate the hemodynamic changes induced by anesthesia and intensive care sedation, better understand the data obtained from the monitors and better understand the effect of interventions such as volume expansion and vasoconstriction. So the, the formula of venous return, which is in the textbook, is as such. The venous return is determined by the difference between the mean systemic pressure minus the right actual pressure divided by the resistance to venous return, indicated C as RV. And this is equal to cardiac output. And this formula is very similar to the one that actually show the determinants of cardiac output, that is mean arterial pressure minus the right atrial pressure divided by the systemic vascular resistance. And in equilibrium, of course, this is equal to the venous return. Now, the first question that the clinician should ask himself or herself is, what is the mean systemic feeding pressure? And the answer from the guidance curve is, as you can see with my arrow, is that the mean systemic feeding pressure is the pressure that equals the one at the right atrial pressure at which the flow of venous return stops. Uh, so if the, the mean systemic feeling pressure is equal to the right atrial pressure, the venous return is zero. Now, this is fairly theoretical. In practice, what happens is that if you take here an animal and then the animal uh, actually has his heart beating, then you just uh, arrest the heart and within let's say about 15 to 20 seconds the pressure in the systemic circulation and in the heart will actually decrease and meanwhile the central venous pressure and the right arterial pressure will decrease and they will come to an equilibrium and this pressure is not zero this pressure is about 10 millimeters of mercury and this pressure in the cardiovascular system with the heart arrested is the result of what is called the stress volume, quote unquote, I will come back to this, and the compliance of the cardiovascular system. And this is actually uh, fairly similar, although not exactly the same with the venous uh, compliance. Now, the answer is, can you actually calculate or measure this? Well, it's fairly difficult to measure this in human beings. There are a few models in the literature, but actually the, a few uh, uh, years ago, someone came up with a uh, algorithm in which basically it is possible to calculate the mean systemic feeling pressure through the algorithm uh, coming from the right atrial pressure uh, the mean arterial pressure and the cardiac output with a few corrections and in a recent article published uh, this year there was a comparison between what was calculated as the algorithm derived mean systemic feeling pressure and the one measure of the mean systemic feeling pressure coming from the inspiratory hold value. And the bottom line is that the, the algorithm actually predicts fairly well the difficult to measure the mean systemic feeling pressure in humans. So the baseline is that although it's not quite straightforward to actually get and measure the mean systemic feeling pressure in humans, it is possible to calculate it. Now, what I've showed you before is from uh, formulas of the venous return where the circulation is not pulsed. So the cardiocentric calculation of the cardiac output is stroke volume uh, times the heart rate. I call this pulsed. It is possible to calculate cardiac output in a non-pulsed, and it's a cardiocircuitory centered approach, the difference between mean arterial pressure and the right arterial pressure divided by systemic vascular resistance. Once again, this is equal to venous return. And the non uh, actually pulsed formula for the venous return, as you have seen it, is the difference between mean systemic feeling pressure minus the pressure in the right atrium divided by the resistance to venous uh, return. Now, uh, the, the mean systemic feeling pressure, as already mentioned, depends on the stressed volume or the standing volume and the venous compliance. Now, you can also actually attempt to write the formula of venous return by taking into consideration the fact that the circulation is pulsed. And the formula actually simplified is the stress volume minus the pressure in the right atrium 
multiplied by the compliance of the cardiovascular system and then uh, divided by tau. And what is tau is the uh, actually the time it takes to get 60% of uh, 63% of the new steady state once a heartbeat comes to a compartment of the cardiovascular system. And this is related to the compliance and multiplied by the resistance. So if not time is enough, the uh, given compartment will not actually turn to steady state and the volume will be trapped in the upstream compartment. So heart rate becomes a factor in cardiac and vascular compartments filling and emptying. I think this is extremely, extremely important, not very useful uh, in, in uh, because not measurable in clinical practice, but actually it sends us to the idea that even in the venous system, the, the flow is pulsed and therefore the time it takes for a compartment to fill in on fear owl actually uh, counts. Now, this is what I will actually uh, would like you to, to remember. So basically, the, if, if you uh, would empty an animal from all its blood, the total blood volume, then you would start putting the resting volume. And as you can see, uh, most of the resting volume will not distend uh, the, the, the vessels in the blood. And at some point in time, the, the volume that is increasingly now uh, put into the uh, animal is starting to distend the, the vessels. And this, the right, for, the, the right formulation is distending volume. And in the literature, mostly it's called stress volume. Well, it's not stressed because all the, the, the volume is under the same pressure. It's simply distending. So the usual uh, way in which we should look at the total volume should be the sum of the resting volume and the distending volume. And the distending volume is only approximately 30% of the total volume, and this should be remembered. Now, when you look here, there's a slope in terms of an increase in the distending volume and the transmural pressure, which actually will get you for a given compliance to the mean systemic feeding pressure of about 10 millimeters per mercury. Now, the problem is, uh, this is the expected slope, let's say, in a normal individual, we, you and me now. Uh, but let's imagine that we are very, very stressed or we are undergoing heavy physical exercise. Well, the mean systemic feeding pressure is going actually to increase and the slope is also going to be a little bit steeper. And this is because there was a change in the resting volume which decreased. The, the standing volume actually increased and then for a smaller increase in the distending volume, you will have uh, an in, uh, a higher increase into the systemic feeding pressure. Now, this is not often uh, encountered in clinical practice. What happens when you give general anesthesia or you put a patient under sedation is the opposite. That is, the resting volume will increase, the distending volume will decrease, but most importantly for clinical practice is the fact that the slope is not going to be steeper, but is going to be more shallow. That is. You can give even more volume, but the increase in pressure is going to be lower. So therefore, if you want to increase, in this case, the systemic feeding pressure to about 10 millimeters of mercury, well, simply giving additional volume will probably not help. You need to get the slope as close as possible to uh, the normal. So this is a very, very important message. And if you were to retain only one message from this presentation, this is would be, in my opinion, the most important. The second most important message is that the changes in the standing volume between a very stressed individual uh, who is anxious before general anesthesia and a, a patient who was given general anesthesia is about 1,000 ml. So this is the switch, expected switch, in the distending versus the resting volume that would undergo a patient. But it, if the slope would be the same in a patient who underwent general anesthesia as in a patient who is awake, well, it would be just sufficient to give additional volume to get back to the mean systemic feeling pressure that would maintain venous return. And the fact that the slope actually is shallower would mean that giving volume to restore the mean systemic feeling pressure is not enough. And this is also showing in the second mental image in which you would have the distribution in awake versus patient on the general anesthesia or deep sedation of the distending volume. So when you give a patient general anesthesia or heavy sedation, the distending volume will increase.
and it will increase mainly in the peripheral veins and the venules and a little bit less in the large veins. And this would actually show you that because of the changes in distending versus resting volume, once again, you need to take into account these changes in volume, but you would also need to take into account the previous slide where I showed you that the slope of the relationship between the distending volume and the mean systemic feeding pressure is actually shallower. So the take home messages is that the changes in distending versus resting volume during general anesthesia are related to changes in the compliance of the vasculature, mainly venous, and the correction of decreases in distending volume uh, by general anesthesia in the absence of hypovolemia that would decrease the total volume would not always be corrected by volume expansion because the slope of the distending volume versus the pressure that I showed to you. Thank you for your attention.